seems legit. Hello, legitimates, and welcome back to my channel. This is this month's pattern. It is a fabulous toiletry bag. Still needs an iron. I just finished it. It's hot off the needles. Uh, but I think this is a darling. There is no seam in the base of this. I don't particularly love seams at the bottom, so I designed it without one. It comes with two slip pockets and then just a big compartment in the middle. Uh, I've used waterproof canvas. But it is a pretty quick make, as you can see by the size of the video, and a great gift idea. So let's go. Let's get started. All you're gonna need is the zipper, one zipper pull, and two rivets for your hardware for these. So the cost does stay quite down. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my slip pockets um, I have fussy cut the girls because I can and this pattern you can do a lot of chain sewing which I also really love if you have ever been here before you know I love chain sewing so I'm just gonna pop the first one down we're gonna stitch and then back stitch making sure that they're right sides together and then along we go now this is a straight line so I don't need clips but if you're new to sewing feel free to put clips on there don't use pins if you're using waterproof canvas because you punch holes in it. So right sides together again. I always like to put the softer side under the machine uh, because then the feed dogs are gripping it. But I found works for me and you can just continue on stitching to the end and then back stitch. And then I'm gonna cut off this one and the tails. Now you can trim this down if you want to. I'm going to fold back and put a crease in the lining and then fold it over. You get a much neater crisp if you do it, or like a crisp edge. I'm going to go up to my four stitch length because I like a nice decorative stitch length along here. back stitch out of habit and then I'm gonna cut this one so it's just like a continuous train by doing it this way which you don't have to do but if you do you've got less tails to cut off you can also iron this if you want to if I was using a cotton lining it would definitely be need to be ironed but the waterproof canvas folds and creases quite nicely back stitch again Trim that off, and so now we have a slip pocket. We're now going to grab the pocket backing pieces. Now, I've used a drill here that was, it's not the same, but it was in the similar color family, and I decided that that works for me. And I'm just going to line this up and clip it. Now, you can um, stitch around the edge if you want to. I'm just going to clip it in place like this. I haven't put clips at the side because I'm now going to grab two of my side pieces and put them right sides together here. So it's going to hold all the layers. But if you like basting it, you definitely can. I put the basting in the instructions. I'm just not doing it here. Clips down the side. Now because there's multiple layers now, I will be using clips. I don't like it when things move when I don't tell them to. So the clips are the best way to avoid that problem. Okay, so we've got clips down two sides. I am going to, I've designed this whole bag with a half inch seam allowance, just because that's what most of my bags are. Move that aside. So I'm gonna do one edge back stitch and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to set this one up as well so that I can chain stitch everything. So again line it up along the bottom edge, Ooh, another clip broke, don't know where my kit, it's, it must be that time of year. I do have more clips in a coffin box somewhere in my room, I might have to get them. So I've clipped it just at the bottom edge and then I'm going to take the two side panels and put them right sides together. The other one I made in my um, 
actual pattern. I use Bazooku Duck Cotton. I find I like a thicker cotton for these as a personal preference. Also a thicker waterproof canvas would be really nice as well. We're going to clip along. Uh, there will be templates available for these as well because this is a great gift idea for men and women. You can never have too many containers to hold things. So now that I've done a little bit, I'm going to cut that one off just so it's not weighing on my sewing. I'm also going to have to move that clip because it's in the way. So we're going to stitch and then back stitch. And this one I will go bottom to top. It doesn't really matter. Stitch. Just do a little bit and then cut that one off. And then we're going to back stitch at the end. We are back on our joining stitch length too. I used two and a half. That's my personal stock standard favourite. I do know that Sandra from the Ghana Sewing Room, she prefers three and a half. So it's just it's a bit of a personal preference. I'm going to go back up to my decorative four stitch length and I'm going to fold this over and press it down. Now if you want to, you can trim off some of this seam allowance. Uh, it would be, a, if you're on a domestic, it would be a good idea to at least do the corners um, as we've still got more layers to stitch in that general area. Oh, they're a bit blunt. And that's a bit thick there. You don't have to use zigzag scissors. It's just I like using them. And I like to say zigzag scissors. Oh, getting a bit blunt again. Um, I will do a video on how to sharpen these as like a separate little thing. So now we're going to open this four stitch length and I'm going to top stitch. All my top stitching is done at an eighth of an inch. So we're just going to stitch that down so it looks pretty. And then again, now that we've cut this one off, I am going to trim about half the seam allowance. Got to leave a little bit or what are you stitching it to? And again, straight scissors will be fine here. There's no curves, you don't have to use the zigzag scissors. I'll just am. Alright. So now I'm going to open this one up and I'm just going to finger press it open. You can iron it though, if you are concerned. Ironing would also make it more flat. So if you're on a domestic machine, um, ironing will make the seam more flat and potentially easier to sew through later. And then we're going to open this one, stitch back stitch, down we go, chop that one off, open it up, and back stitch. Now I'm going to pull them all out. If you want to, again, you can sew the bottom of that pocket. I'm going to skip that. So this is my base. I wanted to do a vinyl base just because I like vinyl bases. It is a toiletry bag. So having a vinyl base potentially will keep it out of spills and mess. So that's why I opted for that. But you can make them completely out of just a cotton. I'm just telling you why I did it. So now we're going to pin right sides together along the base. Now vinyl has a nasty habit of trying to stretch sometimes which is why I like clips on it. We're going to go back to our two and a half stitch length and we're going to do again everything's half inch seam allowance until it comes to the zipper. The zippers are always a quarter inch because you can't get closer. So I'm pushing down to make sure that the vinyl doesn't stretch. You can also um, put the clips so that they're the other way. That would also work for you. Okay. 
Then I'm going to fold this down, go up to my four, and I'm going to top stitch. And I'm going to move my clip bowl so I don't knock them off. So what I'm doing with my hands right now is I'm pulling the vinyl away from the seam so it sits as flat as possible. You can't really iron. You can't just chuck an iron on the top of vinyl. So pulling it apart does feel like the best option. And so now we've got a nice top stitching line. Back to adjoining length and we're going to add the bottom of this to the other side. In fact, let's put the clips on the other way, and that way we can put the vinyl underneath. One more clip. Here we go. Under we go, we're going to stitch and back stitch. Back stitch, pull it out, trim off the tails. This is the part that can't be chain stitched because it's all now one piece. Put the clip back in the bowl, otherwise they end up on the floor. And then again, we're going to, so I'm going to fold, I want the excess facing the base, not the other way. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch, you don't absolutely have to back stitch your top stitching, most of the time I do. off your tails and now you should have one solid piece now the pattern does come with an optional you can add a base piece but don't do it yet anyway if we're doing it we'll do it later so now we need all of our little bits well most of them we'll do all of them now so we should have two vinyl side bits and then we should have our zipper tabs the zipper tabs are designed a little bit bigger and then you trim them down. So we're going to take our zipper, which I already cut. That never happens. I usually do it on camera. I'm going to split the zip open. And then feed the zipper on. We want to make sure that you put a zipper on and don't just start sewing zipper tabs. That was crooked by about one tooth. But... I want it to look good, so we'll try it again. There we go, that's better. Zipper is on. I like to put it in the middle, that way the actual zipper pull is not at all in my way. I haven't put interfacing on these either, because uh, they're zipper tabs and we do have to punch holes through them later, so you don't want it too thick and make it tricky. So we're gonna put this right sides up, zipper on top, and then this one right sides down. Now drill does have a grain, so there is a right and a wrong side. So I'm going to hold this under, and I'm going to stitch, back stitch, go over the zipper teeth because they're nylon, and back stitch. Then I can chain stitch this together. It's long enough that it will spin back around. So I'm going to put right sides up, zipper right sides up, and then this one right sides down. We're going to stitch, back stitch, over we go, back stitch, trim that off, trim off those tails, and then I'm going to go up to my decorative four stitch length, because it's pretty, and I'm going to top stitch. So you can actually chain stitch the whole zipper, and it just saves you a bit of thread and a bit of time. Not that this is a long project, but if you're in a hurry, it's always good to save time where possible. I didn't top stitch at the start of that, and that's okay. It'll survive. We've still got to stitch over it anyway. One zipper pull. Now, while these are here, I may as well do them and get them ready. 
So I'm just going to put this double sided tape kind of on one side. I'm just going to fold these in half, but you can fold both sides to the centre if that's more your jam. I'll just fold them in half because it's easier. So we're going to peel it off. Actually, I need the top stitching length, don't I? Fold it in half. Peel off the backing. Always have a bin handy is another thing. Otherwise you end up with a really messy floor throwing everything. And even if you put it in a pile to the side, it will most likely fall on the floor. So we're going to go up one side. We're going to stitch and back stitch. Go up. You won't see the end, but you will see this end. So we're going to stitch across, swivel back, down the other side back stitch and then when I put it in I want it to I want the open edge to face the same way so that the top stitching will be the same when we do it this is just a little detail you don't absolutely have to do this but if you are a more advanced sewer what I'm doing is I'm having the top stitching so that I can put the nice edge to the front of the bag on both ends But again, you don't have to do that. And my, my bottom stitching is as nice as my top stitching. So it's not a big deal, really. They are now ready for later when we need them. Let's go back to our zipper. So we're going to grab, we should only have three pieces plus those two little bits left. So I'm going to put, it doesn't really matter which side's my front. They're both cute. Um, but I think I'm going to put the brains to the front. So to do that, and this is how I always do it, even off camera, I'm going, oh, I've got to find the centre because these are a little bit longer. So I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to zip up and down on that so that it's flexible because that's way easier. And then we just put a clip in the middle of the fold. Ta-da! Center. So, zipper is closing. I like it closing to the left, and I'll make this one my front. Um, if you're just doing one fancy pocket and one plain pocket, you might want to think about which way the zipper goes. I'm going to find the center of this. And I'm just going to make a little tiny clip. You won't see it, but it will help us line it up. So this is the way I want it to go. So we're going to flip it over and put right sides together like that and then put actually and I'm gonna make the clips face this side so that we can have this side right sides up and that way the feed dogs will grab the lining and then we're just gonna clip out towards the end now I will cut off the excess later it's not really a right or wrong time. I mean, you can do it after you clip it together. I like to do it after I've sewn it together. Just in case. Right. So I'm going to take this one. Make the zipper sandwich. And the edges just line up with the edge of the fabric. Because it should be the same size. If you've done everything correctly it's the same size. If you did the wrong seam allowance, your outside bit's going to be a little bit longer at the sides here. Trim them down. Nothing wrong with having to trim stuff off. It just means wrong seam allowance 99% of the time. So just cut it off. Alright. Under we go. I want to start on all the fabric. And this will be a quarter inch seam allowance. Now the first side is easier than the second. I didn't want to do a boxy bottom. I like to have flat bottoms on everything. So the second one of these is definitely going to be a bit tricky. But don't stress. Top stitching length. And we're just going to do the one side. We actually don't need to know the other one of these because it should all just line up. So I'm going to fold 
that seam allowance down and then stitch over the top of it. So we're going to go stitch, back stitch. Now, you might want to iron this. Point here and here where the intersection is, is going to be thicker than the rest. So that's going to be the trickiest part to sew over on a domestic. It's not impossible. You may just want to iron it flat or squish it with some pliers. I'll show you. Oh, I love these pliers. So you can literally just fold it down the way you want and then come in here and squish it flat. I use two hands because it gets extra flat. And that will just make it less of a rise to go over. The pliers do work. I do love the pliers, especially with thick problems. All right, squish them down. Then I'm just going to grab that. We'll use these scissors because they're right here. These will be blunt in my zipper scissors, but trim off the excess so that everything lines up. And then with this, whatever fabric you're using for the inside, I went with waterproof canvas because it's just a toiletry bag and it will get wet. I'm just going to finger crease that down and it should be enough to make it sit nice. I'm going to take my lining. I'm going to put my lining on first and then I'll do the other side. You can do it the opposite way. It doesn't really matter. I just personally find this easier. And I like to clip the two ends first and then work my way through the middle. Especially if you're doing like an uninterfaced cotton. Cotton's got a bit of stretch, so it's more likely to not fit if you do it the other way. This does fit. I'm just going to put some clips on it. There we go. Then we're going to bring this edge up like this. So again, corner to corner. Ah, that's another one. They were my favourite glitter clips too. The glitter clips just keep breaking on me. It's like they don't want to live here anymore. Okay. So now you should have a loop and a flat bit. We're doing quarter inch seam allowance because it's a zipper. And backstitch. Trim off the tails. Now, this is the tricky bit. You can skip it, it just means that one side won't have top stitching. I think it would look better if you do, but this is the tricky bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull back just this first section. I'm not going to worry about the rest. I'm going to worry about where the needle is. So we're going to stitch, back stitch, and we're going to do little bits at a time, stopping with the needle down, and then we're just going to keep pulling this down to get on the inside. This is probably the trickiest bit, and it, this purely exists because I didn't want to split in the bottom of the base of the bag. It can be done. You just got to work in small increments. Alright, and then we pull it back and down. And back. And you've got like a hole that you can see through. I know you guys can't see. I've got like one inch left and back stitch. And then I'm just going to pull it out a little bit, trim the tails so I'm not wasting a whole bunch of thread pulling it back through. And done. So I've got a bit wrinkly. I just pull it out. It'll be fine. So now I have top stitching along both of the zipper edges. Now let's clip the sides. I'm going to go back to joining stitch length while I remember. The first thing I'm going to do is come and line up my vinyl base 
at that seam. That, you really want it to look nice there. It is important. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to line up this top edge here. And I'm going to push the zipper tab up towards the lining. Or down, you know, it's, I suppose it's up. Then you can add clips in between. And if you've done the same seam allowance everywhere, it should match up lovely. Then I'm just going to put one clip down here. And maybe just a couple more along the side. Then I'm going to flip it over so that I can always start from the thick end. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to line up the vinyl base because this is a point of interest that people will see. Alright, I'm going to line up this top edge so that that matches as well. And then when you pull that straight, it should all line up beautifully. Again, if there's a bit of a discrepancy, it'll just be the seam allowance that you used somewhere. In which case, if there's a bit of a bubble, just squish it down with enough clips that it goes away called easing things in and it does work and you can hide mistakes quite easily. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'll actually be cutting off this corner in a minute but we're going to start at the bottom. Oh that sounded horrid. Look at the mess it made. How rude. It's because I meant to hold the tails when I sew and I never do it. There we go. Stitch and back stitch. Then we're going to go up. And we're going to just sew the whole way up the edge. And see, then if we flip this over, all of my clips are up the right way. And I can start again. There's not actually a reason to um, backstitch the corner, because again, I'm about to cut them out, but it's a habit. Okay, happy days. Then on this bottom edge, I'm going to stitch a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm just going to do... A uh, little bit to like here, back stitch, and then we want to leave a gap so that we can turn the bag through later. So I'm going to come to here, stitch, back stitch, and just run off the edge. This bottom edge is a different seam allowance, but if you forget and you do the half inch, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, if I'm totally honest with you. Now I need a ruler. Where is my ruler? Alright, I got a ruler and I got my sparkly swearing pen. I love this thing. So, now we are going to measure from the seams, which is why we put them on here to begin with. We're going to measure from the seams and draw squares in the corner. Could I have designed this bag without the corners? Probably. But I find this just as easy. So there's no seam on the bottom edge, so it's just to the fold. You just have to trust the process. Right. So now what I want to do, and this is just going to help me later, I'm going to come back and stitch and back stitch and reinforce just right before where we're going to cut. Because we are going to cut our stitches and we didn't back stitch there earlier. So I'm just going to stitch and back stitch just a little bit. To reinforce that seam. A 
did that one already. I subconsciously did it uh, because I knew it was coming. <laughs> and this one. Oh, I have to do it from this side. That's okay. I just want to reinforce here. That way the stitching won't come undone when I cut it, which I am going to do right now. I'm going to grab my vinyl scissors because I am cutting vinyl and I'm just going to cut. It'll be a rectangle and a square. They're all rectangles. You want to try not to overcut. I'll cut out a little bit there. Then let's do the other side. And across. These ends will be easier because they're thinner. Also, the tip of these scissors are blunt. Um, that's why they're on that bench. I'm going to get my husband to sharpen them. Very annoying not having the tip of your scissors to use. There we go. Fantastic. We're going to pinch the outside base and we're going to snip and find the center just because it'll be easier later. Like that. Then we're going to grab our little tabs that we stitched earlier and the end where the back stitching is, is the end that we're going to push in here. So we're just going to slide it in. And I'm going to put a clip on it. And then we're going to box out that corner. So we might trim off some of this excess here. Just because, again, it'll be easier to sew. And then I'm going to put my fingers in the right angled section and pull out. And that should bring it all together. So I'm going to put a clip and another clip and another clip like so and that's going to box the corner out. I'm going to stitch, back stitch, pull it out, trim it off. And then we're going to do the same to this end. So, trim off some of the excess. In. Squish and line up that side seam with the center that we clipped. And then work your way out like so and then I'm just going to squish all the bag down out of my way trim off those tails oh look at all these tails everywhere They just get in the way and I don't want them to fall through the seam that I'm sewing. Now I won't be using clips on this just because I personally don't need to. But we're just going to line up those two bits and stitch. Now what I just did there was I pushed one of the seam allowances in one direction and then the other one in the opposite direction because it will help the seam sit flatter. So you've got one one way and then the other one the other way. Helps it sit really, really flat. All right, now this side we need to think. Whichever way I pushed it on this side, I need to do the same on the other side. You can even just put like a single clip there to hold it while you adjust and then go under your machine. So I'm gonna stitch and back stitch. Tails. 
And then we're going to turn through this hole. Grab a corner. I usually like to make it a poppet. The bigger the gap you leave, the easier it is to turn. I possibly should have left a slightly bigger one, but that's okay. you get it to here it's easy you can even grab these and pull them the little tabs I'm gonna put my fingers in and push out that base now if you're adding the base piece in now's the time to do it so now that I've pushed it down you would insert your base into here and then I would just squish all of this down and use a mini iron and then iron the base on, or it could be a floating base, either or. And then I'm gonna come up the sides and then push the zipper tabs out. You want them out and glorious because we are going to punch through them. All, right. All the way out so that they're neat, like so, and then you don't have to do these corners because it will go back in. I just like to because I find it easier. If I grab there and there and pull tight and then just tuck those raw edges in, that will show me where I've got to add clips to seal up the bottom. Now if I was selling this, I would change my thread to the same color as this. So I'd put the silver thread in uh, so it's less noticeable. You could also hand stitch it shut. As much as I hate hand stitching, it definitely could be done. But because it's for me, I don't mind a little bit of extra green thread. Just stitch it shut along the bottom like that. Now if you wanted to keep it more uniform you can actually stitch all the way from here to here. Even though this bit's shut it would give you like a continuous top stitching so when you shoved it in the bag it would look even neater. I like to stand over my bag and I'm just using my fingers I'm literally doing this and wiggling the corners in and so it should sit nice like that. The zipper's sitting, see how the zipper looks wavy? I haven't stretched it, it's just the way the bag's sitting. Because if I do that, see how suddenly the wave's gone? It's not always you've done something wrong. Sometimes it's just you need to beat the bag into submission a little bit. So, now we're gonna punch the holes for our rivets. I mean, if you didn't have these, you could just keep the bag like that, but I like the edges turned down. So I'm going to punch a hole in the center of there, and then this one, I'm going to maneuver it so that the seam line here is in the middle of the zipper tab. And then to make it even easier, I'm going to squish this down. Again, if you don't have these, that's okay, but it will just make it even easier to go like that. So you want to go right in the middle there. Actually, let's do the other side as well. And then I can grab the other one. I'm just trying to find where my other one is. Oh, there it is. So maneuver it so that the seam line is in the center of here. It'll make sure that it is centered. And then squish. Two hands. And hole punch right in the middle. And the same with the base. Excellent. 
I'm going to push this through. You always have the most trouble getting the rivet through the layers because sometimes they like to move on you after you've punched them because they're jerks. There it is. Oh wait, I've gone the wrong way. You have to go from the bottom up. I knew that. Okay, so bottom up and then we're going to grab this and bring it on top. Because I think it's prettier on top. You can put it underneath. I like it on top. Like that. Squish those. That's not rainbow. That one's rainbow. All good. I'm not worried about how all this is folding yet. I'll fix that in a sec. <sighs> Grab this. I like to hang it off the, d the table because I find it easier. Pop this under. Now when I want it, when I clip it on, I want this to be kind of straight. Like that. One on the end. Then we're going to do the same to the other side. I've got to grab another cap because apparently there was a gunmetal one in my rainbow collection. So we're just going to put the cap on there, like so. Squish it together with your fingers and then squish it down and straighten it up. Now this is what it looks like and it looks like a hot mess because need to straighten up all your edges, right? Once we push out, see how we've pushed out the sides and now it sits nicely? How nice does that look now? So it's gone from that to that. So you just got to do the final kind of probing-y, pushy parts. There we go. You can give it a final iron, because mine's obviously just been squished. But that's done. How cute is that? I am quite a fan. Again, it'll just need that final kind of moment better. So there you go, one toiletry bag. And you can carry it by just like looping your hands into there. So if you like go on holiday a lot and you have to go to, or like if you're camping and you have to go to a bathroom, you just, it doesn't need a handle because you can just use that as one. All right guys, well, thank you for joining me and I will see you all in the next video.